That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Trade Talk. Uh, this week we're discussing Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman, Volume 2. Uh, so, for people that don't know what this is, Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman was a really cool series that DC did toward the end of the mid to the end of New 52. I remember it was coming out along with like the Convergence story arc, uh, at, at, like the, those ran concurrently for a while. Um, and what this did is every issue was multiple or maybe just one, depending on the length, one and done Wonder Woman stories in any fucking continuity the writer wanted. Uh, most of them just went for like a vague Wonder Woman status quo. Some of them did really weird stuff, which was kind of cool. Like there was one story I remember in volume one where Wonder Woman was a rock star. And that was just, that was her status quo. She was also a rock star. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this does like just a bunch of different, a uh, bunch of different stories. Uh, and I'm just going to go through, not necessarily all of them, but I'll go through the ones that I liked. First story is called Generations. Um, and it's about Wonder Woman on a quest for the egg of a phoenix. Because uh, apparently once a phoenix is reborn in its ashes, its ashes coalesce and combine into an egg. An egg that does not hatch, but an egg nonetheless. And the egg is made of pure myrrh. Uh, which is a really cool idea. I actually really like that. The art in this issue is absolutely gorgeous. I love this kind of art for Wonder Woman. It's got such a so much great lighting in this. Um, but anyway... As she's attempting to get the egg, she's attacked brutally by the cheetah, and it's a whole fight. And meanwhile, there's some stuff going on with her mother. It's her, it's Hippolyta's birthday, and Wonder Woman's trying to get the egg for her. And it's all just a, a big birthday present. Um, but Cheetah doesn't know that. She thinks the egg has the secret to immortality. Um, in any way... It ends up, she gets the egg and she just kind of pissed because it turns out it is just a, a world's greatest mom gift. That's it's kind of fun, kind of sweet. Um, ultimately, it's about the idea of trying to, um, trying to grow, trying to, to appease and, and please your, your parent. Uh, it, was, it was kind of sweet. Uh, nice little mother-daughter story. Uh, issue number two is um, not included. And this is a story where Big Barda and Wonder Woman team up and fight Brain, or The Brain. Uh, not Pinky and the Brain, just The Brain. Um, and I don't know, this one art, this one's art style is a little rougher. I'm not sure if DC was using this as kind of like a, uh, all right, kid, we'll give you a chance kind of thing. So this one, the artist on this issue is Matthew Dow Smith. And I remember some of the other issues had like, mm, I'm trying to think of the right way to put this. <sighs> this is gonna sound mean, and I really don't mean it to. But some of the issues had like really not professional art really low quality, non-professional style art. Um, this one isn't the worst or anything, but this is kind of an example of it, where it's just like, that's not the best kind of art to look at. I'm, I, I'm sorry, it's, it's not bad, it's a million times better than anything I could do, but it does look amateurish um, by, by modern comic book standards. Uh, and so I was a little, I, I'm just wondering if DC was using this as like, oh, okay, kid, we'll give you a shot. Like, you can do some art for a, a little one-and-done comic kind of thing. Um, but this is a, a pretty good story in that um, Wonder Woman talks to the brain. is like, okay, why are you here? What are you trying to steal? And it's revealed that, oh, it's trying to get some um, some chemicals or whatever so it can prolong its life because it's, its containment suit's gonna not long, not be able to support the brain. Um, and Wonder Woman promises, oh, that's all you need. 
you don't have to steal it, will help you, will let you use it temporarily and help you continue to survive if you surrender peacefully and turn yourself in. And that's just very Wonder Woman, super Wonder Woman kind of moment right there. Uh, next issue we have is Venus Rising, written by Alex DeCampi, uh, with art by Neil Good. Uh, this is a really cool one because you get this Wonder Woman in a um, hijab, which is kind of neat. I really like the, the art on that. That's a really fun image. Um, anyway, uh, but it has nothing to do with the Middle East. She's actually comes to a space station from the Middle East, and it's about this space station that's uh, in orbit around Venus, and there's all these things going wrong with it. Uh, and Wonder Woman gets a costume change, so she gets her, her space Wonder Woman suit, which is kind of cool. Um, and station has a malfunction, and people look like they're dying, and then there's giant monsters, and then they realize, oh, the giant monsters aren't giant monsters. They're not Venetian monsters. They're the people we think we're losing. They've been converted into Venetians. Uh, and this is what life on Venus looks like. Yay! Uh, but they're happy here, so we'll leave them. Uh, this, this story probably did the, the weakest to me. Um, I just, I don't know, something about it was just like, eh, not, not, not. Like, it's, it's really random and and kind of kind of kooky, uh, but not necessarily in a way that I find super fun. But artistically, I thought it was it was a step up from the last one, so it's a bit of a trade off. Uh, Rescue Angel is written by Amy Chu with art by Bernard Chang. I love Bernard Chang's art. He was doing the art in the Batman Beyond comic for a little while there. Um, so this is interesting. It's about a female soldier who's in Afghanistan uh, trying to be a bit of a liaison for uh, villages there so she can uh, so that villages can send their young girls to school. Um, I love this line that we get in here. This country is uh, from one of the, the women running the school for, for young girls. This country is changing slowly. We have female generals in the ANA army now. Not many, but it's a start. These girls risk their lives every day to come to this school. They are, I am proud to say, the first to get an education in their family. The Taliban may use force and intimidation to get their way, but they will lose. Why are you so sure? Because, young lady, these girls are our future, and you cannot stop the future from happening. I really, really like that. That's a very, very good positive message. Um, while the the military convoy is on its way back to base, they are attacked by the Taliban, and um, the female liaison soldier that we uh, we had here um, is trying to save one of her uh, one of her um, partners. What's the word I want here? I don't know. One of her fellow soldiers. Um, and when it looks like she just can't do it, she's not going to be able to pull through and, and save more of them, suddenly Wonder Woman's hand extends and says, Get up, Angel. Uh, get up, soldier. We're not leaving anyone behind. And Wonder Woman helps her um, save everyone in the, the crew um, until they're extracted by helicopter. And she's really woozy, and as they're, the helicopter's taken off, she says, what about her, as we see Wonder Woman saluting it from the flames, and says, what are you mumbling about? Um, and then we get, like, the big reveal. Wonder Woman's just a comic book character. Uh, the soldier did it on her own. Wonder Woman's there in her head, pushing her on. And I really like that. That's a very, very positive message. Um, really enjoyed that issue. Uh, and it just, like, these are the kinds of things, this is why I love, love, love these short one-and-done stories. So much good happens in, in issues like that. Sabotages in the Stars, written by Heather Nuffer, and art by Ryan Benjamin. Um, whew, I forgot about this one. The art in here is absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, Wonder Woman stops a meteorite that was about to destroy uh, India's equivalent of a uh, NASA launch. Um, but luckily, Wonder Woman is, was able to save it. She dissects the meteorite, however, because it was really suspicious that in all the land base that it could have hit, it was going to hit this, this rocket launch. And she finds a microchip in it. Uh, and turns out Lex Luthor has developed a way to direct meteorites. Uh, and then there's a, a attempt to, again to sabotage the rocket because this is such a threat to Lex Luthor's business empire that a backward third world country like India is finding an effective, a cost-effective way to travel to space. It's going to cut into his profits. Um, so he's trying to sabotage the launch left and right. Uh, but Wonder Woman's able to stop it uh, a couple different ways, and eventually, and they, they, I don't know, they stop it. They, the day is saved. Um, fine story. Uh, I, I like the art more in this one, to be honest. Again, you, you open it up, and just those, that first, two, you know, two pages are just really gorgeous stuff right there. I really like that. Man. Especially that first panel. That is a great eye catcher of a first panel. Um, Wonder World, written by James Tinian the Fourth, with art by Noel Stevenson. So Noel Stevenson uh, is the head writer, showrunner. I'm not sure what you want to call it um, of the Netflix She-Ra show. Um, and she, you know, she's made her name in comics here and there, uh, is, is kind of an up and coming voice and artist. Uh, she does do art, though she has a very distinct style, I should say. She's not, um, she, she is more of an experimental thing. Uh, you know, I'll show you some of her art and I'll compare it to the story I was kind of ragging on a bit earlier. Um, I will say Noelle Stevenson's art style is not on the the level I expect for quote unquote professional comic book artist. But it what what really matters is the context in which you tell the story, it, the context in which you use the art. So like when I talk about this story arc or this story, you know, the art not really looking super professional, well, it's more of a problem because of the type of story it's telling is pretty basic and doesn't really justify any kind of experimental or, or different, unique kind of art style. You get to Wonder World with Noelle Stevenson's art style, and it's a much more laid back, slice of life, kind of fun, kooky adventure moment. And so this like more, you know, laid back, um, kind of sketchy art style, it just works a lot better. It, it fits the tone of the story a lot more. Um, so in this story, Wonder Woman, in fact, traveled to Man's World at a much younger age for a visit. Uh, she, she ran away from home and traveled to Man's World and ended up on Coney Island's Pier <laughs> or something similar to it. Um, and ran into a group of girls and spent the evening hanging out with them. Uh, she found a girl who was crying and mad because some boys in the arcade wouldn't let her uh, play Dance Dance Retribution. So Wonder Woman challenges them for honor uh, in, in the game. Uh, and of course, Wonder Woman does fantastic work and beats the game. Um, meanwhile, her Amazon protectors are trying to find her. Uh, so she wins, uh, and the guy foolishly and in, in a chauvinist male bravado kind of way bet his shirt that <laughs> she wouldn't be able to beat him. Uh, and so it just, I love this moment where they just cut to like her saying, hey, you didn't honor your part of the bargain. And they cut to it. she's just running down the pier with her new friends wearing the dude shirt. It's really funny. Um, 
Anyway, we just see Wonder Woman and uh, and the girls have a great time. Noel Stevenson keeps putting in this joke, and this is probably I. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Jeff Johns has had one of the most profound impacts on Wonder Woman's character ever. I. That's weird to say because one, he's never written a Wonder Woman run. He's barely wrote her in Justice League. He gave her like one moment and it's it stuck so damn well. Uh, the ice cream thing. So we see her having ice cream and for the first time really enjoying it and then doing more girl stuff at the pier, playing laser tag, going shopping, and then they're back and she's having more ice cream and everyone's getting concerned and they go do some dancing and some looking up at the stars and then she goes back for more ice cream but they have to stop her. <laughs> and it just Everything's got Wonder Woman eating ice cream now. It's really cute. Uh... Anyway, there's some more combat or some more some more tension, um, and Wonder Woman eventually has to has to go back to Themyscira with her, her chaperones and all this stuff. And she promises she'll come back because this world is wonderful. Um, I, I do really like this this conversation she has. Uh, I never Im even imagined a day like this. Do you understand what you have here? Why it's so special? I mean, this part of the city is pretty sweet. No, your whole world in the last few hours have only seen a fraction of it, and certainly there is darkness. But there's so much wonder here. They teach us the horrors, dictators in war and abuse of power. They say our little world is the only world in which true peace is possible. But I can't believe that. I can't believe in a world of so many amazing things that people can't come together and be extraordinary. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know, it's all kind of big. But today, I don't think today could have been as good without you. Just seeing how excited you were and how strong you were. It made me feel excited and it made me feel strong. I'm not gonna lie to you, though. There's some pretty crummy things that happen in this world. I don't think your sisters were lying about that. But in all, of that, you have a day like today, and it makes it all kind of worth it. I really like that. That's a really good message. Uh, Tinian actually writes a really good Wonder Woman. Between this and uh, and what he's doing with her in Justice League Dark, he, he has a pretty good voice for the character. I can't lie. Uh, but anyway, the Amazons uh, take her back. But before they go, they must do one last thing. And that's eat more ice cream. <laughs> Got a lot of mileage out of that joke. No lie. Uh, and we have The Problem with Cats written by Lauren Bukes and art by Mike Mihack. Mihack? Um, this appears to be some kind of crazy story with Wonder Woman fighting Cersei and Sheeta and Medusa. But then it turns out it's a little girl playing with her sister's dolls, getting herself in some trouble drew all over one of the Barbies. Uh, and so she has to stay home and clean up her mess while her sister goes out to a movie, uh, which instead she just keeps playing. <laughs> um, and then when her sister comes home, a dog that's off his leash starts running at her like an idiot, uh, freaks her out. So her little sister inspired by Wonder Woman, uh, throws the invisible jet, which is a plastic container, uh, at the dog to stop it from charging. Um, the owner comes and says, oh, I'm so sorry, he's, he's, bar he's not gonna hurt you, he's just stupid. Uh, and then that endears the sisters to each other. The older sister feels bad for getting all angry and stuff, and then they play together. Nice little sweet story. Again, this is definitely, um, this is a more polished art style, I'll definitely say, but it's not, it's not the typical kind of art you see in comics, uh, in, in modern superhero comics, I should say. 
Um, but it, it fits the story really well. It does really work for the context of the story, so I was able to really appreciate it. Um, Girls' Day Out, written by Celise. Uh, C E C I L. Is that Cecil or Celise? Or I, I'm not sure. Uh, Cecil Castellucci. This is the woman writing the um, the female Furies book right now, with art by Chris Sprouse. Uh, and this is Lois Lane Wonder Woman hanging out uh, for an interview. I believe I reviewed this issue when the, the single issue was out. Uh, so if you want more in depth thoughts on that, you can go find that video, hunt it down somehow. Um, but anyway, Lois Lane is interviewed Wonder Woman's super condescending until Wonder Woman has to come in and save the day because of giant robot attack and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but Lois Lane uses her Twitter followers to help save the day too because the robot spawns all these monsters that can only be destroyed by, uh, dirt for some reason. Quite a weakness. Um... Anyway, uh, she's able to use her Twitter followers to bring dirt and, and stop the monsters from overrunning the, the city. Uh, so Lois Lane and Wonder Woman have a new fab respect for each other by the end of the issue. Yeah, yeah, cool, fun. Just a fun issue. Uh, nothing, not much to it. Uh, is it the final story or is there anything else after that? Uh, da -da, da -dun -dun -dun. Okay, there's well, at least one more. Um... Next issue is called VIP, written by Sarah Ryan, with art by Christian Deuce. Um, this is about a pop star who's uh, kind of like a, a bit of a Miley Cyrus type. Um, not quite to that extreme, but it was like, was a child star, is now transitioning to, you know, more of a adult medium, um, adult contemporary. Uh, it's it's not played as dramatically as Miley Cyrus's image change, but it's it's definitely hinting at that. Uh, and anyway, she's been getting like death threats and, and creepy stalker attacks and stuff. And uh, Wonder Woman's brought in because she's friends with the the um, bodyguard of the um, the singer. So she's brought in to help. Uh, with security and they find out it's actually been the head of security that was behind all these threatening uh, things um, and so they have to you know stop him and get him to admit that he just wanted to have this girl like constantly be in, in the little girl attitude and uh, he says a bunch of dickish things um, These were lessons I was providing to I was, I was providing to make it clear that this direction she seems to want to go in simply isn't appropriate. But she wasn't getting the message that we need girls like her to stay girls, to stay feminine and sweet and wholesome and stand against what is what this sick culture wants to make them into. And it's not just her female fans this affects. I'm telling you that when girls try to take on these kinds of roles that they just aren't suited to it also disempowers men. Um, <laughs> I, I like the reaction to this. Isn't that lasso supposed to have powers? The lasso compels truth, but it can't stop man's planning. <laughs> oh, the shade. Um, I don't know. That's that's an interesting one. Uh, certainly, we can talk about the oversexualization of. Uh, young women in in pop media and certainly that is not fully for uh the the benefit of pe female empowerment of imagery but at the same time the attempts to repress and stop it are pretty fucking blatantly misogynistic in and of themselves so it's uh it's an interesting conversation but yeah the guy's clearly in the wrong and and anything stalker even even remotely stalkerish if, if ever you're doing something and you think, hey, does this come off as stalkerish? The answer is almost 100% yes, and that you should stop doing it. Um, so that was, that was pretty good. Uh, and that's the... Um, there's, there's a friendship built between Wonder Woman and the singer, and uh, she, to show her gratitude, gives Wonder Woman a, um, a secret link to download the new album. 
Uh, and one of them is like, this is my jam. Uh, it's, it's sweet. Uh, the next issue is called Casualties of War, written by Aaron uh, Lapretzi with... Um, oh, no, Aaron... Aaron Lapretzi is the writer and artist on this issue. Um, in this issue, Wonder Woman finds that a dragon has attacked the city, uh, and she goes and discovers the dragon, and the dragon's upset because apparently the Amazons killed its people, its, its fellow dragons, uh, in a war long ago fought. But the dragon god... Uh, came to him and said, I can give you the the daughter of the Amazons and you can kill her as retribution. Um, but really the dragon god was Ares. Um, and so Wonder Woman tries to talk uh, reason into the dragon, but unfortunately it is hell-bent on killing her. And so she has no choice but to end its life and she feels very bad about that. So she goes to the island it hailed from and erects a statue to him. Uh, here lies the last dragon of Kostarostas, a casualty of war. Um, she makes a pledge to uh, fight off anyone that, um, or find out who who deceived the dragon uh, and and led to its death. Um, yeah, really, it is. It's a great collection of stories uh i like this thing because it's the kind of thing i can just give to someone who's like hey i want to read some good wonder woman what's some good wonder woman i can just throw this at their head uh which is always nice um i've read volume one now i've read volume two so if you want to go find volume one in the trade duck episodes you can do that as well see if i can remember to leave a link in the description but let's be honest i probably won't uh but yeah plenty of good stuff here um nice nice uh nice story Nice stories, nice fun, simple. I like that they're... Like, I've, I've read some of these before. I know for a fact I have. Um, but I couldn't recall all the details. So they're nice and simple and short to the point where they'll, they'll actually leave your head a little bit. So this is the kind of thing you can go revisit. Like... You can't necessarily revisit Nightfall. Like, once you read Batman Nightfall, that's it. You, you've read Batman Nightfall. You know what happens. You know how the story goes. Um, it It is impactful. It leaves an impact. But these are nice, short, simple stories. So you can just read the single issue, read the sections of them, and, and then, you know, walk away from it for three years and then come back. So, yeah. Really, really enjoyable stuff. Uh, the... The issue with Noel Stevenson uh, doing the art and James Tinian IV writing it was absolutely the highlight of this collection. Uh, if you don't want to go get that issue, you're, uh, you don't want to get the whole trade, I think that issue alone is worth it. Um, wish I knew which one that was in. Uh, it's hard to tell. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Wonder World, whatever issue has Noel Stevenson, uh, Noel Stevenson's name on it. Go get that one. Yeah, good, good series. All right, that's gonna do it for Trade Talk, everyone. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book.